Hey guys, welcome to the fourth video of this tutorial series, and in this one, we're going to be creating our first enemy, and as usual, we can just hop right into the editor. Okay, so we're in the editor, but uh, the first thing I want to do now is just hop into Visual Studio, and we're going to go to the game controller script, and in here, we are just going to uh, change our static game object ball to a public one rather than a private one. And oh, it looks like I may as well save this. We don't need any changes there, though. And now we're going to create two new scripts, and the first one is going to be called AI underscore um, nanobot. And we're going to open this up. And in here, we're just going to start out by writing all of our variables. So to begin, we need a oops, sprite renderer SR. Alpha, oops, private int fader, one, public float fade speed, oops, speed equals 10f, and need public float speed to how fast the bot moves. You need move cooldown range. Or the next time it picks the bot will pick a new destination to go to. This color is going to be the color that, um, well, we'll talk about that later. It'll be a lot easier to explain through visuals. So next move. So next fire. Need a laser prefab. Which we score once we kill the nanobot with the ball. Oops. Redo. There we go. And we're good on that. Now inside of our start function, we're gonna write um, sr equals oops, sr equals transform dot child one because we're going to attach a second child as the sprite render that we want to access. Oops. Dot get component sprite render. And then we do color equals sr.color and alpha equals sr.color.a destination equals we'll do that part in a second we have a function that it's going to equal next move equals zero and that's all we need to write in our stop function now we're going to go under the update function and we're going to write a couple new functions here so we're going to write a private vector to get next destination and in here uh, we're going to write float x equals random range range zero screen dot width and we'll copy this we'll do it with height V float y. And here we're going to return camera main dot screen to world point of the new vector two using x and y. And this will pick a random point inside of our screen, except it'll convert it to a world coordinate so that the bot will know where to move. Now we'll do private float get move cooldown. Just so that we can randomize a cooldown between its movement to make it a little more interesting rather than everything moving at the exact same time if we have multiple nanobots. So we'll just do between 0 and 3. And we're going to do private float fade. Oops. <laughs> fade int direction. And in here we're going to write fader equals direction. Return fade speed. And down here we'll do void on collision 
enter 2D, collision 2D, let's see. And in there we need to write if c.transform.tag equals pushable. Then game controller dot change points point value and game controller dot score multiplier and then we'll just destroy game object. Okay, and up here we need to change this to get move cooldown. Actually, this is get next estimation, sorry. And then in the update function, we are going to write all the code for what it's going to be doing constantly. So if time.time .time is greater than next move, destination equals get next destination. Next move equals time dot time plus get oops, get move cooldown. So what this will do is have this run once every time the cooldown goes off. So we're gonna do something similar for next fire. So if time dot time is greater than next fire. And vector three, vector to target, Oops. vector to target equals game controller dot ball dot transform dot position minus transform dot position. And float angle equals at f dot a ten two vector target dot y vector to target dot x we're going to multiply this by math f dot rad two degree to convert to two degrees from radians and now quaternion rotation equals quaternion dot angle axis angle and transform dot forward and now we're going to instantiate our laser prefab. Oops, prefab. Oh, I can't <laughs> really read back to this so it actually says prefab. And we're going to do it in this position, position of us, and with the proper rotation. And now we're going to do next fire equals time dot time plus. Uh, fire cooldown. Okay. Now we're going to give it the effect that it is blinking and going between red and yellow. So we'll do alpha plus equals fade direction times fade speed times time dot delta time alpha equals map f dot clamp o one alpha and this is reusing code from our fader uh, script if you haven't noticed that yet color oops equals color and now we're going to write if alpha is greater than 0.95 going to fade negative one and then if alpha is less than 0 0.05 and we're going to fade in the opposite direction and now here we're going to write transform dot position equals vector 2 dot move towards transform dot position so we're moving from our position to our destination which is set whenever we call get next destination and delta time times speed Okay, oops. And that should be all we have to do for this script. So now we're going to go into the editor again and we're going to create a new script called 
AI underscore laser. We're gonna open up Visual Studio and reload here. Sure. Okay, and now we just have to write something very simple. We don't need any variables or anything. Just avoid update. Vector 3 <coughs> direction equals vector 3 left right. And float angle equals transform dot Euler angles. Oops, dot Z. Oops. I don't know what that was. Anyway, times math F. Dot dig to red. Close sign equals math f dot sign. Wrong sign. Angle. And we're gonna do the same for cosine. Okay, <clears throat> and now vector three forward equals new vector three. Direction dot x times cosine minus direction dot y times sine. I'm going to put a comma here. Direction dot x times sine plus direction dot y times cosine. I'm going to write zero f. Close this off. We're done. There. Now we got to tell it to translate forward constantly. So we're going to translate, and we're going to write forward times 0.1f. And all this fancy math stuff is for um, it's for finding the forward vector, so that we can tell it to constantly move forward. And we should remove this comma here, and that should be it for that. Yep. And now we need to do void on collision enter 2d. Don't forget the 2D, it's important. 2D C. If C dot transform dot tag equals pushable. Basically, if it's the ball, then we're gonna end the game. End game. And we might change this to have a health system depending on how hard the game ends up being. But right now we're just gonna end the game whenever a laser hits the ball. Okay, so that should be all for these two scripts, and now we're just going to go ahead and get into the editor, and we're going to create our ball and our laser. So this one will be the laser. I'm going to pull it into prefabs in just a second. So we'll give it the knob sprite. And for the color, I'm going to use this code. FF four zeros FF and I'm going to add a box collider 2D with offset this zero and then we're gonna do 0 0.19 and we're gonna do 0 0.3 here and if we zoom in the only thing that we need to change the scale so we'll do 1.9 about and then in here we're going to do 18 and here we're going to do another 1.9 actually this is the, I don't think this is the scale should matter anyway so in here we should be done with the laser now we can make it a little bit more slim if we want and that looks fine right now so we're just gonna drag this over here and turn it into a prefab and now we are going to create the um, the prefab for the nanobot itself. We'll call this nanobot. And it needs uh, two more sprites. That should be another child. Okay, and now we're going to just give them all the knob again. And so for the first knob, going to use this color code 347's FF and we'll just paste that in there and I'm going to copy over some scales this is just 1.16 and 1.2 will work fine too and now we're going to attach AI underscore nanobot 
and I change this to two to make it a little easier on myself. And we need to add a circle collider 2D. And that should be fine for that one. For the second sprite, we're going to, well, the second, yeah, sprite, we're going to use this code. Paste it in right here. And for the third sprite, we're going to use a yellow color. So we'll just paste that in there. And these scales are going to go down a little bit. So like this. And we'll do the same with the red one too. And that's what our nail bot will look like. So now we should be fine to just pull him in here. And what we're going to do is drag our laser prefab in here so that it knows that it's laser to instantiate is that laser. And now if we just pull him into the scene here, we'll just pull him in like this and we'll go triple zero, but we gotta move him over so we make sure he's not touching our ball when it starts, or when it spawns rather. Pull him down a little bit. We can just leave him outside because he should come towards us. So let's hit play. Oh, <laughs> and it looks like looks like he's firing the lasers, but they are not uh, moving forward. So we should go in and fix that. Oh, it's because we forgot the AI underscore laser. So now. He should move around and fire lasers at me. And <laughs> if I can manage to keep the ball in, then one of these should game. Oh, oh, we cut it a little too small. Okay. There we go. So we'll just use 0.5. And we'll hit apply. And here we can just change the ball to have no gravity, just as a test so it doesn't move around. And indeed, if we get hit, then the ball will, uh, then we will uh, end the game. So, and if we can hit this guy, oh, <laughs> no, he shot me. So if we can hit this guy, there. If we hit him, then he will give us points and he will die. And so now just for fun, let's just add a ton of nanobots just to see what happens. That should be good. There we go. <laughs> okay, so clearly it becomes very hard when all of these guys are spawned at once. But anyway, uh, that's all that we're going to be doing in this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like if it helped or if you liked it. And hit the subscribe button to get the rest of these videos. Thanks for watching.